Hey, it's Cosmic Ray, the quantum mechanic. When your classical laws and Newtonian physics start to fall apart, call the quantum mechanic. I got something to show you. I was going to do a real elaborate green screen behind me and all that, but we're just going to do a real hokey here. I'm going to share my new cartoons with you for the chemi kids' chemistry coloring book. So what we're going to show you are all the different cartoon characters that we've developed over the last 25 years. And start so stereo effect with the microphone so we're just gonna have to zoom in and play it by ear here so let's zoom in one of the first ones I was proud of was whoa, too much right here this is Ammonia alien. I didn't want to do anything with aliens, but you know, since kids and everybody's so into aliens, what's neat is when we show you the periodic table of shapes, where we just use shapes for the elements, this is nitrogen with three hydrogens and a lone pair. So this is what ammonia would look like. And with the lone pair of electrons, he does a negative mind meld, so it's like a magnet. He's got the power to pull negative ions and things, especially a proton for what's called the ammonium ion, NH4+. Plus. And here was another one that just came to me at the last minute. The book's going to be a color by numbers thing. So to introduce the numbers... I've been doing this thing, Roy G. Bibb, for the longest time. This is the way you can memorize the colors in order. Red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, violet. The colors of the spectrum, right? So we're calling him Roy G. Bibb, RGB, the rainbow kid. Hey, that kind of rhymes. I didn't even get that Bibb and kid, right? Roy G. Bibb, the rainbow kid. I can't fit the kid part in here. See that down there? So there's the kid. And what the coloring will do is red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, violet. So the colors, as you'll see, are all color coordinated to what the elements are going to be. Like red is number one. That's going to be for hydrogen. Orange is the phosphorus. Yellow is sulfur because sulfur is yellow. Green is going to be oxygen because negative and green uh, living everybody thinks of carbon as being green but carbon's going to be black blue is the nitrogen as you saw over on the ammonia alien so let's see what else we're going to have here for our cartoon characters here's one down here and what makes it fun now with the shapes is you can compare the molecules okay here's one show you how we do the program here. Let's get an arrow. Take the new Caliente. Cut that one, move another one. Okay. Bring Z, get it back where it was. Good. Anyway, we can't move it now, but the oh Capitan. Capsaicin, the one that's the red hot peppers now. You can see it looks almost like the ammon uh, dopamine. Back it up here. So, a better view. so see here, you got the benzene ring, two OHs. Go down here, an NH2 group on a carbon chain. Well, look at capsaicin. That side of the molecule looks almost exactly the same. Make this up here. See the, the similarities? OHs, O's, you know, it was worked on there. Benzene ring, he come down, he had a nitrogen before all this got moved around. I don't know how that happened. Um, vitamins, we got cartoon characters for each vitamin now. So here's vitamin B6 with the muy caliente. Bandages 
fingers all over my fingers. So the wheels aren't working. Let's get that. Okay, so vitamin B6. I thought this looks like Chuck Berry. He's like doing that chicken walk when he does the guitar across the stage. So again, with the periodic table of shapes, this comes in because there's no letters, no numbers. Red is positive, green is negative. So a red dot inside a green is an OH, that's an alcohol. Benzene ring, we'll show later how benzene it gets a little face in there. Blue is nitrogen. Here, this is all dots here, but the uh, color code's the same. The shapes are a little different. Vitamin E, there's eight different tocopherols, they call them. The different side chains things. But up here again, the benzene, see the way it gives them a face? And then this kind of looked like spiked hair to me, so I call him the punk rocker. And, you know, it's just shapes for kids to play with. Now here's one that I was even getting confused. With all my vitamin and chemistry experience, I get things confused. Vitamin B1. Well, I call it BS1. Thiamine was another one. Thi, another name for it. Thi is usually referring to the sulfur group. So thiamine is a way to remember it's got the sulfur in it. But I just call it BS1. This is the biggest vitamin next to 12, B12. But look how it's like two rings. You can see the nitrogen. It's got a sulfur in it. The double bonds are the yellow lines. Methyls, an NH group on the end of it. So it's a real intricate molecule. But when you draw it with colors and shapes, now it's not as frightening. I'm going to try and move this closer and get a little stereo effect. I got the mics panned left and right. So up here is the next one is vitamin K. Now he was kind of a punk rocker too, but I kind of just left him there. Maybe he's a skinhead. But the way you get vitamin K to remember is, I lost my bloody hair. Well, get it? Bloody vitamin K is for blood clotting. So that's the vitamin that assists with blood. Now here's a good example of showing all diff three different ways of showing a molecule. Why are these things jumping around here? Some, something happened. Something moved. The lights are Okay, so look at PABA here. This is great. I got to do this. I had it all prepared. It's going to be green screen and everything. Okay, so here's three different ways of expressing, of expressing PABA. Okay, PABA was actually called vitamin B10. Did you ever hear that? Paraminobenzoic acid. Now see, it's a ring. Here it's a fish. Now compare this to vitamin B3, niacin fish, a ring with the OH on the end. They look similar, don't they? And a nitrogen here has a nitrogen outside there. So you can compare them, and I think this is really an excellent tool to compare molecules, you know? Now another way to express the same molecule, here is Ben. I told you whenever benzene, when there's a aromatic ring they call it put a little face in there whenever I saw the three lines here it always looked like a mouth and two eyes so I drew the mouth and two eyes in there so to get more of a correct chemical structure for the real chemists here's your they'll draw this as a carboxylic acid but in water ionized in blood in a biological situation it's going to be just the two O's it's going to lose the proton and these oxygens are going to share a negative charge between them. Okay? So I just draw it like that. That way it gives it the tail. You see the negative in there? And here are the nitrogen, NH2, with the lone pair. That You could draw that as an alien if you wanted. And now with the periodic table of shapes, this is what I like here. Zoom this in. Carbon diamonds, okay? Carbon has four bonds. 
okay? So one, two, three, four, hydrogen's one, to a carbon, to a carbon, and then this double bond is shared in there. See, I'm missing the double, the dots in there. That's aromatic, so those dots should be going all the way down around there. Here's your carboxylate tail. Here's your NH2 using the shapes again. This is totally the shapes. So circles for oxygen, green circles, black triangles for carbon, red little dots for hydrogen. I didn't say triangle, did I? Diamonds. Diamonds for carbon, and then the blue triangle, because there's three bonds for nitrogen. Now, this is where the chemistry structures in modern chemistry books, they don't show the electron pair. And that's what's most important, because you have to be able to count electrons. That's the whole idea of stable molecules is having this thing called the octet. And the octet is based on electron pairs. By having pairs is what creates stability. It's really interesting because two electrons should repel each other, but somehow they, the way I explain it is it's an up and down force, they're called Cooper pairs, and they kind of share a part of space together. Two electrons, you'll see that in water. Okay, let's back it up a little bit here. Close it up a little bit. Come over here. Vitamin B5. Okay, B5, bingo! This has a nitrogen. Remember when I said it gets that fourth bond? See how it does like a little mind melt? Here it does it on a methyl group. So vitamin B5, they call it pantothenic acid. This nitrogen's in the middle. Look what it's got here. It's got a methyl out here. It, it holds another methyl. That's four bonds for the nitrogen. That's why it gets the plus in there. Two carbons with an alcohol on the end. And then down here, another methyl. So this is a neat way of showing how vitamin B5 can do the alien thing. So if you're really into aliens, now here's really a powerful tool. I'm moving the wrong thing. I gotta move my screen here. Vitamin B2, the riboflavin. Riboflavin does two different things here. This is what I like to call the Riboflavin centipede. Okay, look, everything moved. I don't know what happened. This can't, I can't help but laugh because none of this should be there. I had this thing set up perfect before. Okay, five carbons coming off here with four alcohol groups on it. So I call him Riboflavin centipede with Ribo, the alcoholic dog. <laughs> Never heard of an alcoholic dog, have you? Okay, so here you're going to see is you got three rings in this. Okay, now what this does in your mitochondrion, whenever you have glucose being broken down for energy, you need to move electrons and the protons will kind of go with it. So for there's only two molecules that do this. The flavins, the riboflavin, and then actually the B3 that was over there, the niacin, nicotinamide they call it. We'll show you some more of that later. But for the centipede here, what he does is come up here. When it's not reduced yet, see it's skinnier and the two bonds here, there's one on the end there, one on the end there with just a lone pair of electrons out there, right? Well, when through the reactions, this flavin will take two protons, two electrons, and it gets what's called reduced. Reduced because the electrons coming give it a negative, so it's reducing the positive charge, however you want to look at it that way. But this shows where they go. See, the double, the two bonds that were up here now become a single bond here, so the waist would actually kind of get closer. I should take these band-aids off my finger, but I got bruises all over them. So, Here's where one H goes on that end. Here's another H with an electron there. The electron goes in to make the double bonds single between the, because these are carbons in here. So now you got one double bond down here, where before you had two double bonds with no 